Well, welcome to the Inside Line, powered by Sixstock. I'm delighted to stay on the line today. We have Lee Keegan. Lee, you're very welcome to the show. Thanks, Billy Allen. Appreciate it. Good, good. It's been a it's been a while, Lee, and I suppose looking at you over the last over the last number of weeks and months, um, and looking at it from my own perspective, I lost three county finals. Be remiss of me not to mention Westport winning winning the county final. I know you've since exited the the, the the kind of champions to my Cullen, but I'd imagine when you sit down in Westport, kind of this winter, and look back at it, it's um, it'll be a campaign that that just will remember fondly. Um, yeah. Um, listen, probably similar to yourself, Alan. We were a long time probably trying to get to the top table of, of the better clubs of Mayo. Um, I played a lot of intermediate football during kind of my peak of my career when I was in my early 20s through my late 20s and I suppose we were lucky enough to go on an all Ireland run then in 17 with the with the club which was brilliant so listen it, it was it was brilliant uh, it's probably still very hard to sum up emotionally how much it was meant to us as a club um, it's probably as you said it'll be in the kind of the weeks ahead now and even the months probably that, that pass by when you have a couple of quiet moments how much it, um, it actually was uh, how much it meant to people and um, I, I was asked a couple times after the game how I felt, and I still can't answer the question because I suppose, listen, the, the obvious reaction is you're delighted. Uh, you're probably more relieved as well that you just got over the line. Um, and the fact that we're a big underdog as well, it probably added to that kind of the whole spice of it all. So, listen, it was brilliant. We had a great time after. Uh, no lie with that. We celebrated accordingly. Um, but did I see that they see you have lost? Have you lost six finals? Six finals, but the, the, they are the, the long, long time ago. I think the last final we were in was 91, where we played Holly Wench. So, yeah, so th- there was no relevance to this group in terms of senior status or even playing in a final. So, the, but the last couple of years, we're, we're building really well. We played in, I think, we're two semi finals and then a quarter final before that. So, it was just trying to get over the line. The semi final was our biggest probably obstacle the last three years. And when we got that then, and we've actually a pretty good record in finals, to be honest, uh, as a club in terms of intermediate, we've won all our finals and then it's our first senior final. So, it was brilliant. Uh, and just to be told that we're history makers of the club, that, that's something that we will always be identified as for, for Westport GA. Yeah, and I, su- I suppose it's always difficult, um, particularly winning something for the first time, to turn around that quick and come into a kind of championship and to reach that, that kind of high and to have to bring the lads down to air quickly, maybe on the Tuesday, Wednesday after the final and face into a, into a kind of championship. Was that a factor going into the kind of championship or... or like sometimes when you win something for the first time, you're you're nearly happy with that lot net now to the bonus and so you obviously put your best foot forward, but as I said, um, it's very difficult. So, uh, I think a lot of people are probably reviewing the game and, and say that Westford probably didn't take it seriously. Um I, I probably totally disregard that. Um we, we actually went to win that game. Uh we've seen a great opportunity to be honest. Um like my Cullen or I I firm believe that we did the contender to all our club this year. Um, I think they're a fantastic side. But we, we, we took that challenge very seriously. We trained accordingly. Uh, we planned as much as we could to be honest in the time frame. No more than my Cullen. They had a week and a half turn around, two weeks. So just came up against a better side, to be honest. Um, and never, as you said, I think it's, it, that was probably the key. That we never reached the heights that we probably got to against Battle in the county final. Um, just a bit off. Like I, I was going to say before we started, like our, our, our conversion rate was 13 out of 27. And my yeah. Cullen's was 21 out of 24. So we actually had more, more scoring chances than my Cullen. But that's not a reflection of the game. I think, you know, overall, we got a bit of a learned lesson in terms of how far down the track my Cullen are. There were two or three years in terms of experience, physicality. I think the physicality really hurt us. Um, we just, we, we, do, we haven't really experienced that kind of up, up front and personal. And they just give us a hard selection in, in championship football. And it's one that we should probably look at again, maybe going this next year of what a really, really, really top quality team is with ambitions to do really well inside of their province. So, listen, they're a great side. I, I have no doubt they're going to... I think they will connect and they're definitely no disrespect to any other team. And I think they will definitely be challenged for the for the Club All Ireland. So, great, great lesson for our lads and our younger lads as well. So, but I don't think they'll be looking at that during the winter months anyway, for sure. No, oh, yeah, that county championship to enjoy, which, which I'm sure is well. And I suppose looking into... Kind of looking into that off-season, I suppose for yourself, look, you're a, a, season, a season campaigner at this stage, if you don't mind me saying, has... As the off season for you, and I'm sure you need a I'm sure you need a break now coming out of an inter county season straight into a club season and kind of playing so many matches. Has the off season changed for you in, 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 in for maybe your first few years compared to what's ahead of you in the next couple of months? Well maybe with Westport winning the championship the next couple of months could be could be a bit rough too. But in terms of preparation for next year, have things have things changed for you over the years? 
Oh, massively. And you probably know as well. I, I suppose when you have kids, then there's there's a there's a different life outside of football that that is, is kind of waiting for you at home and trying to pick up the pieces that your your partner or your family are doing for you throughout the year and pick up the slack that you're not there to do during the week and obviously you're training and I'm gone a lot. So that that for me is one thing. Anyway, I suppose the other thing that changed. I, I used to love partying a lot in the off season, enjoying the few months off and just getting to meet up with friends and stuff like that. That's it's. We're still gonna have a good time during the winter. You know, I have a lot of weddings. I'm at that. I'm at that unfortunate age where everyone's getting married and kids and all that. So, a couple of weddings, bits like that. We'll have a nice dinner, dance with the club, and celebrate the the county final. So, a huge difference when I was probably 22, 23, 24 to now I'm thirty three. So, I'm not fit to keep up with the kids anymore. Um, I let them off and do their own thing, but just yeah, I think the biggest thing for me is just I, I just be present around the home and enjoy enjoying the kids run around, run a riot with myself probably. Um, so looking forward to that. And we we just built a house there last year, so getting in there, having a bit of chill time, and just digest probably the year that we've had or I've had again. Uh, it's been a long, long season. Uh, it felt probably longer this year more than most because we had a bit of break from the Kerry game to the club, and then we went through the club campaign. Then so we only finished up there last week, so. I'll take a bit of time to digest what, what's going on this year, review how I am, how we think we're going to life, what's priorities, what's not priorities, and then make a decision with Kevin, then probably the next couple of weeks, how, how I'm how I'm feeling. Do I feel up for another year? Am I ready for another year? Um, do I have everything in place that I can give everything for another year of mail? So there's a lot of big questions to ask Kevin and, and discuss and, and see where that is. But like you said, I know one thing, I'm going to enjoy the winter, enjoy the time time for football. I think that's a really important thing for when I when I definitely was first of all was although I like going out and enjoying stuff, I think football is always in the back of my mind. Um where now I, I totally switch off from football. Uh, and I, I've been pretty clear about that with a lot of people that football is it's not really my sole priority anymore. Although yeah. I love it to bits, don't get me wrong, it's not it's not my sole purpose of life. Uh, there's so much more um bigger things on the table I need to look after and make sure they're they're in place. So football for me is, is more it's a fun factor. It's a meant to be enjoyable thing. Where before, when I was in my mid twenties, it was very much it was really like my job. Uh, that yeah. was all I was thinking about, all I was breathing, living. So um, it's funny when you get a bit older, yeah, you see the realities of life and what's what's more in perspective of what you need to give your sole purpose there. Yeah, that's true. And I would have been, I would have been exactly the same. It wasn't until kind of later in my career that you kind of realised that, like in your early career, football. Football is everything, and, and like everything you do is basically on that. But I suppose I don't know if it's kids, maybe, or um, or maybe just get a bit more turn and you realise that there probably is more to football, and, and yeah. it's probably a good way to be as well, just, just to have a little bit more of a of a balanced um of a balanced life. But look, I, I won't press you too much on next year. I know you've you've had a long season, but um, if you don't mind, we'll have a look back maybe at something like we had. I played on a Dublin team, um against yourself many times that they had many, many great battles for, for too many almost for <laughs> too many for almost ten years. And to be fair, even though Dublin obviously won their, their fair share of our Ireland, a lot of those games were, were, were kind of went either way or were very close and um look, yeah. we won't get into the ins and outs of the games. But I always I always felt like when I think of those games, I think of yourself and yourself and Darren McConnelly obviously two two uh two great, great talents and two great guys as well who who but Kind of for me watching you play, like it always amazed me how 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 you played so close to the edge, but always looked in control. I know you shipped a few yellows and an odd red here and there, but but you always looked in control, and particularly in those in those times where you were American Dermot, probably two of the two of maybe the top three or four footballers at that time in terms of where you were in your career. Um you talk to me a little bit about some of the games with Dermot Connolly. I'm sure you've met him since and stuff, and these are the best of paths at this stage. And what happens in the field is always left on the field, but they were great battles. Yeah, um, and this is like that's a testament how good Dermot is for myself, um, because I knew I had to be at the very limit of my, my capabilities to take on a guy with that talent. Uh, and I've made this clear over the years as well that there's certain guys you mark throughout your career, and, and they're, they're brilliant players, fantastic. But that many are like German in terms of X Factor and even just do ends on the pitch. Uh, and and he, I, what I liked as well about Jerry, he came out and like he said, like, I'm not going to watch German play his football because he let him pick in six, seven points for me and then yeah. everybody thought top by how good he was. So, of course, I had to be on the edge to a degree, uh, but that's the way football is. Every top team needs to be on the edge and, and push the ball as far as they can. So, but like when I got the task of getting like Satali, like it was. Obviously, I find it a very, I suppose, a compliment to the management that they trust me to mark someone of his ability because I would have seen him as probably the top player for, for Dublin for years. So 
Like I, I love watching, I still love watching clips of him because he just he does things that no one can do. He, he dream of the stuff he can do with his left foot, foot right foot, just some of the scores he takes. So the fact that I got to line up with some of that talent and that capability, it was a great trust factor for myself. But then that's only one aspect of the game. I have to go and mark it then. So listen, it, it's a battle I thoroughly enjoyed. I'd say hands down, we came out half and half. To be honest, uh, he came out better in terms of the overall result. He's got his all Ireland's. Um, but then to the individual battles, it was just one I loved. And, like it just I loved it because. It was a big occasion. Mayo Dublin were at the height of its probably, I suppose, its, its rivalry at the time. So, and it was probably one of the battles I was always kind of looked at as one of the top ones for for age and fun and and X Factor as well. So, like that all added. So I, I just I love that, and that's why you train for big games like that to mark guys like Jerome Connolly because he can do all the training you want and, and behind the lights. It's, it's only when you go out there you want to try to express yourself, and that's the one thing I, I try my best to do is not overly focus on, on German and his talents. I need to look at myself and how I can play my game. So, and I was lucky enough to come out on the right side of a couple of points or goals, but he kicked yeah. it for another couple of the other side a few times. So like, it was, it was just, I just love Mark because it just got the best of each other to, to a certain degree. And sometimes this isn't boiled over, but that's because we care so much about the results and, and what we're trying to achieve for our team. So, um, it's definitely one of the fonder ones I look back on. And, and like, I mean, even from the physicality point of view, like the two of us went toe to toe for, for as long as we did. Uh, and I love that because a guy with, I have huge respect for was able to just give it back to me in spades. So I, I always respect the opponent who, who gives it, but also takes it and, and gets on his game as well. Yeah, yeah, no, and it was clear from, from like when we used to speak about in the rest room, it was clear that the, probably James Horn was a manager at the time, but but, but like you were going to attack every opportunity you get, I suppose. The idea was to try to put Dermot on the back foot. And, but like to be fair to Dermot, for all, his, for all his talent going forward and stuff, like he was never one to shirk to shirk a work rate or to shirk going back and particularly with yourself like like any time I know you got a couple of goals against us but he was never he might have got a couple of yards but he was never far away from you and, and, and I suppose you knew that as well that he wasn't going to shirk his shirk his responsibilities chasing you that's the beauty of German like, you're going to you're going to earn your crust you're going to earn your you're going to earn your respect against German it wasn't a thing you're just going to run forward and pick off a couple of scores if you're going to score you're going to earn it uh, and if he's going to score equally as much he's going to make him work as hard for his possible so that was just the kind of respect we had for each other is that whatever you're going to hear today you're going to work like an absolute dog to get it because that's just the type of guy he was and that's the type of character I was at the time as well that we just didn't want to give an inch and it's probably a bit of an ego thing or a macho thing at the time as well but when you're marking a player of that, of that capability you need to get the you need to get the match your capability that you can and I said I might have clipped him for a couple of scores, but I tell you one thing, hey, he worked you for dog for seventy minutes. Uh, I said he talked about talent, but like he everything overall with him, but it was hard work. And you you seen that first hand, we played him for years, I got to see that first time I worked on him so many times. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not like it was one of I know you're still playing, but it was one of the great battles of those, if not the great battle of those kind of five or six games that we played against each other. Uh, for Lee, um, a number of years ago, a, a, a club mate of mine, Shane Kearney, um, collapsed in the hall in Plunkett's with a heart problem. Um, and I wasn't actually aware. Your, your, your younger brother, Phil, had an issue with a heart problem. Shane was great. He actually went on. He recovered, thank God. And he went on afterwards to, to, to do a lot of work around aware, like awareness around, um, around heart problems and stuff. Your brother, Phil, had a, had a similar issue as well. Yeah, um, it was about this time last year, maybe October last year. Um, he started getting palpitations um, kind of regularly and getting a lot of pains in his chest. So he went for kind of a review and stuff like that. So they said there wasn't anything serious. So then one morning he was walking, he's in a, he was in the NUI, NUI, sorry, he went back to a master's in college. So one morning he was off to college and he just, he basically had a cardiac arrest and collapsed on the side, but he managed to ring the hospital at the same time to, to come and collect him. So... <clears throat> So he's in hospital for about a month, I think, uh, overall. Uh, after he, he got shoulder surgery a couple weeks before that, he had COVID. So he, I, they say bad things come in threes, but he, he definitely got a few bad things. So they did uh, did tests and all that kind of So they found uh, a lot of scarring around his heart. So he'd actually been overtraining uh, during COVID and just put too much pressure in his heart and had an ICD then fitted. So it's equivalent of like a pacemaker and such. So they track him now in Gala if there's any kind of regulations or... <laughs> Kind of if his heart starts going too quick, it's due to the blood flow as well. So, yeah, he was very lucky to be honest. Uh, got quite a scare. We yeah. all did actually to be honest because my brother would be probably fitter than me and healthier than me nearly in terms of looking after himself, training, uh, yeah. really, really involved and in, in keeping himself in great shape. So, 
So as a result, he, he can't play any contact sport anymore. Uh, and he, he's quite limited in what he can do in terms of, of training. So he wouldn't be doing long distance running anymore or bits like that. So, yeah, he got a bit of a, a bit of a shock. So the rest was then in our family. He had to go get tests then to see if it was, it was hereditary. So lucky enough, it wasn't. It was a one-off occasion. But, um, yeah, a bit of an eye-opener. So, so Lee, if you were... Uh... A rapid fire, rapid fire buzz around now, right? Uh, oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> I want the phone. I'm trying to balance the phone on the laptop here. So, Lee, couple of quick questions to finish off on. Okay, bit of fun. Uh, your favorite Christmas gift received? Um, I got a GPS one Christmas. A mess GPS, <laughs> mess GPS, <laughs> so. Wasn't the one you threw? No, Dino, but it was a rep. It was close enough. <laughs> your worst, your worst Christmas gift received. Um, uh, I received nothing from my relative before. Bare wrapping paper. <laughs> nice. Your favorite Christmas movie? Um, it is Chris uh, Home Alone Two. Favorite part of the Christmas dinner? The turkey sandwiches. Even time. Your f- if you were to go for a point with a sporting personality, who would it be? Shane Lowry. We could arrange that. I love that. If you were if you were to go for a point with a non sporting non sporting personality, who would it be? Non sporting. It would have to be the oh Oh Lewis Cataldi. Not sure we could arrange that. Yeah, uh, like, if I like you that were to too. go to a, if you were to go to a sporting event that you haven't been to yet, what would it be? Uh, there's two: uh, Super Bowl or the Masters. Yeah, super. Look, Lee, thanks very much for for um, for coming on today. It's been it's been great chatting to you. Barred a few connectivity issues. Um, lastly, before we go, um, we're going to give you a choice of a six or county box. Um, so Mayo, Dublin, Kerry, Donegal, Kilkenny, Waterford, um, whichever you want to give to a person of your choice. So you give one, of you, you give one of your own if you want to one of your family member, a Mayo team member, a next Mayo team member. Um, so pick a county box and pick who you want to give it, to and we'll get the lads to send it out. Interesting. Um, I can't send the Connor McManus because he's on them. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to actually go with um, Rob Henley, Mayo, and Mayo Box. Rob Henley, Mayo Box. Rob Henley, Henley. Mayo Box. Good Good stuff. Mayo Box. Good Only stuff. because he's getting you married may- now soon, so he might wear it for the wedding. Good stuff. Good stuff. Mayo Box on the way to Rob Henley. Lee, thanks very much. It's been great talking to you. See you soon. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you guys. Thank you.